Hey guys, Techu here and I've got good news. We are going to release my Super Mario Maker database, the one Steve used for his awesome videos. Well, it probably isn't that much news for you, assuming you just watched one of his amazing videos. However, it is good news for me, because I finally get to make my very own YouTube video. Speaking of which, and in case you're wondering, this video is supposed to be something like a manual for the database. First, there were quite a few comments on Steve's videos asking about what I've done and how all of this works. So we will first take a look at that. Afterwards, I'm going to show you guys how to work with this database. If you, like most people, have never worked with a relational database before, don't worry, this video got you covered. So how did we scrap the data from the bookmarking page? First, let's take a look at what happens when we request a page from the internet. Let's assume we are typing something into Google, like ice cream, and hit enter. What happens now is that our browser sends a request to the Google servers. This will generally look something like this. The first part, the host part, is just which server we want to talk to and we're going to ignore it for this video. What interests us is the actual get part of this request. In this case, we are requesting a page called search. This tells Google that we want it to do a search and send us the results. As you probably figured, Google needs to know what we are searching for. This is where the next part comes in handy. That's what we call a parameter list. In this case, there's only one parameter, Q presumably for query, and it contains, no surprise here, our search term, ice cream. Now Google has all the information it needs, the server can generate the page, send it back to us, and our web browser will render it. That's really it. It's actually a surprisingly simple process, and it happens all the time we search for ice cream. Okay, so what has this to do with the Super Mario Maker bookmarking page? Well, here we don't have a single search field, but we are able to select search parameters. And yes, you already guessed it, when we hit send, these parameters get encoded in a request and sent to the Nintendo server. It's exactly the same pattern as before, except this time there is more than one argument and of course the page is called slightly different. But that's it, everything else works like before. Let's take a look at our parameters. As you may know, we can request up to 100 pages containing 10 levels each, but that's per search combination. If we change just one parameter, we get 1000 new levels. It's basically like a combination lock and we try all possible combinations and send them to the server. Now, obviously, we're not going to enter all these combinations into our web browser. Instead, we write a little program for that, but that doesn't change anything. The program behaves exactly the same way our web browser does, sending all those requests and getting all the responses. All that's left to do is get the information we're interested out of the HTML response and to put them into the database. And that's it! That's how this database came to exist, and it's actually how every web scrapping works. And now, with all that out of the way, it's finally time to do what we've been waiting for. It's time to get our hands on that sweet, sweet data. You can find the Super Mario Maker database over at GitHub. Let's see what's in the box. First, there's the Python source code, but it comes with a huge disclaimer. This code was written for in-house use, so there is no interface, no config, and no documentation whatsoever. Also, there may be typos. We're professionals here. I've included it in case some of you guys are interested. However, I strongly discourage you from actually running it. Beside the fact that it will run for days, it's also completely pointless. You would just be trying to recreate the exact same database that's already here. And I say try because as the levels are already here, all you really get is lots of database exceptions and that's about as pointless as it gets. Second, and for most of you probably more interesting, the database itself. This is the SQLite file we will be working with. You're gonna need, obviously, a program to work with the database. I recommend DB Explorer for SQLite. It's cross-platform, open source and the one I use. So let's hit open database and select our SQLite file. First thing we see is the structure of the database. There are two tables, levels and authors, but more on that in a second. For now, let's head straight over to execute SQL. We are going to use something called SQL to work with the data. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And I know this already sounds complicated, but believe me, it isn't. SQL was specifically designed to be very close to plain English. You can think of it as a way to ask your question and get an answer from the database. Let's take a look at our first statement, the SELECT statement. It's pretty straightforward. SELECT some column from some table where a certain condition is true. Let's try that. We want to select the ID of a level, its name, how often it was liked and how often it was played. The table we want to select them from is called levels. And as a condition, let's say we want all levels that have been played over 20,000 times. Now if you run this, we get a resulting table containing ID, name, liked and played for all levels that have more than 20,000 plays. 
This is already a very powerful way to get specific data from even the largest data set. But there, of course, is way more we can do. Let's try to recreate Sieve's level ranking from his statistically best level video. We are already filtering for the right levels. All that's left to do is calculate the rank. Luckily, SQL allows us to do arithmetics on the values of the levels. Let's add a new value to our results. We want it to be likes divided by plate and we're gonna name it rank. Note that I'm multiplying both values with 1.0. This is so we force the usage of proper floating point arithmetics. I don't wanna go into any details here. Just remember that if you get strange results, especially unexpected zeros all over the place, multiplying with 1.0 probably will fix that. We also want to order our results. We can do that with the order by keyword. We want to order by rank and we want the order to be descendant. That's it. Let's run it and take a look at the results. They look familiar, don't they? We've come pretty far. We know how to filter results, how to do calculations on them and how to sort them. But there's one more thing I need to show you. The one thing that separates a database from an Excel spreadsheet. The one thing that puts the relational into relational databases. Relations. A while back, I mentioned that there are two tables in this database, levels and authors. If we take a look, we'll see that every author has an ID and it just so happens that every level has a value called author ID. You can think of these values as a link between those two tables. We can use this relation to link the two tables together using what is called an inner join. Inner joins are used like this. We can specify which tables to join and on what value to join them on. Once we've done that, we can now use all values from both tables. We can now search a level from a specific creator or we can filter levels per country. But you might have guessed it, this is only the beginning. Now that we have unleashed the power of inner join, we can collect and join more and more data. Data from the World Bank, the United Nations, the International Atomic Energy Agency. We can use all this power to answer the most pressing Super Mario Maker questions of all time. Like, which country has the most stars per GDP per capita? It's Japan. Or, which country earns the most stars per dollar spent in the public primary school education system? Yeah, again, that's, that's Japan. And most importantly, is there a country that has less Super Mario Maker levels with over 10 stars than it has nuclear warheads? And yes, amazingly there is. But it's not Japan. Okay, so that's the Super Mario Maker database and how to work with it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're interested in more content like this, please make sure to click the subscribe button as well, so I can tinker together some more stuff. Speaking of which, you probably noticed this is the first video I've uploaded and I have no idea in which direction I want to go with this channel. So if you have some time on your hands, go down to the comment section and tell me what you are interested in. With that said, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Take you out.